Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I am recording without my microphone because I'm just sitting on the couch. I was actually going to do a meditation and then I started thinking about Marilyn Monroe. So I thought I would just turn on my camera and start a chat with Marilyn Monroe from the afterlife. If you've watched Above Life Channel before, you know Ms. Marilyn Monroe has a playlist here. You know that I like to connect with her and I feel I feel a kinship with her. And so I wanted to ask her specifically though about forgiveness. So let's talk about that today. All right, Marilyn, can you come on in? Oh, she's so sweet. I have a really tender heart today and my heart feels tender. And maybe it's because I've been doing some mega channeling in my groups, <laughs> you know, ascended masters and goddesses and deities and saints and all that stuff have been coming up. So maybe that's why <laughs> today I feel tender in my heart. So, all right, Marilyn, can you talk a little bit to us? She's so sweet. She's just smiling and she's like, hello, Bridget. She... It's always so sweet, you guys. She's so, 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 so sweet. All right. So can you talk to us about forgiveness? I'd love that energy for you to share with us about that. Because it seems like you have this incredible ability to forgive. And so I'd like to be able to share that with the viewers here. Because the channeling that we do is about healing too. And so let's talk about that. Okay, guys, she says, it's not, it's not for me to say, it's not my place to say how to go about, about that. I'm not really sure you could say that I'm an expert in that. I don't know what makes you believe that I am so good at that, Bridget, <laughs> that's what she's saying. I think that in the afterlife, Marilyn, you and I have talked a few times, quite a bit, and you seem to have, you've had a lot of experiences in your human life and you in the afterlife seem so forgiving, so able to heal. And despite the things that you had to go through and experience. And so I think that's what I would like to know. Like, did you, were you always just a forgiving person? Is that part of our nature or in the afterlife? Is that something that you learned? Can you talk about that a bit? Everyone has a chance to, I, I think everyone has a chance to be the, the best version of themselves that they can be. And that requires a love that is far greater than what seems to be possible when you're a human. <laughs> And maybe it's because of the afterlife that I have this renewed feeling that you are connected to about forgiveness. I don't really know that, I can't say that I, I tried to forgive or I was intentional in it. I think, I really feel like it's a, a survival thing. It can suffocate you if you have hatred, hate in your heart, or if you hold on too long to a grudge, it can just make you just plain crazy. That's not something that anyone needs. For my dreams, to have a family was one of the greatest saddest quite devastating really parts of my lifetime being able to come to terms with that or just accept that was very very difficult and and I even upon my death, I, I didn't, I didn't actually accept that. I, I really thought that 
I could have a baby, at least one, just one. I just wanted one, one child, one healthy, beautiful child. And I didn't even care if it was a boy or a girl. I just, I was one healthy baby. I thought Joe and I, I wanted to be the kind of mother to be the kind of family that a child would serve. I would have liked to have had that with Joe, but I don't really believe that he really wanted to be a father. But I'm not entirely sure. I think he would have probably done that had I really pushed it. And he knows that, he, I mean, he knew that that was a, a part of me that I wanted to settle down and into the life of a mother. And But I suppose maybe others, other people sort of know you better than you know yourself, I think. I, for forgiveness of uh, myself, for myself, that's, that's the one thing that I would share from the afterlife, that... That is something that comes true for you, for, for all of, for everyone. Everyone can, can have that peace, even after there's been so much pain. I never really felt like I was worthy of being given a child. I'm not really sure that I've believed in my heart that my lifestyle could support that, that, that I wasn't in contradiction with my, my career and my mother, my desires for my career and my desires for my motherhood, for motherhood. I, I suppose she says the universe, which I think is interesting. The universe had different plans. I wasn't angry or mad at God or anybody else. I, I really just felt like it was because of me. You could say I blamed myself. But after knowing, you know, after realizing there's not, there's no one really to blame and, and that not having a child wasn't a punishment, wasn't a withholding for me from happiness. Happiness was a choice that I had, and I, I couldn't bear the loss. And others in my life, as you know, betrayed me as well. I had a lot of betrayal. I tried so hard to trust, to trust love, <laughs> you could say, to trust my heart, but I... I fell in love way too easily. <laughs> I really do. I really do say that that's, I really would, I would admit that. And I don't regret that. I don't regret that part of my life. That part of an existence is simply um, something that I, I was looking for something. I was chasing love. And to forgive myself for something like that, I know. And really, I know what you're asking without saying it, because we've gotten to the point where we've talked a little bit about things related to relationships, public and presumed relationships, let's say that. Yes, let's say that, Marilyn, public and presumed relationships that you had, or perhaps maybe were rumored to have, and relationships that people here on the YouTubers universe feel like caused your death or influenced your, your passing, your untimely death. And so let's talk about forgiveness related to that and the circumstances or the relationships you had that some people feel resulted in your death 
whether you took your life or someone else or other people were involved, which you and I have talked about and I have very strong views on. You can watch that on the playlist, my friends, at Above Life Channel here on the playlist. So can you talk about that? You know, there are some things that a girl never tells. You know how I feel about this, Bridget. We have had converse, We have had many, many dialogues about this. And I don't feel like it's anyone's fault but our own. It's my own fault. It's on, it's, it's, it's my choice. And perhaps did I act irrationally? At times, yes. Maybe obsessively, yes. Mental illness most certainly played a part in that. And my patterns, as you would say, my patterns, my choices of, of drinking and, and medications and all those things, yes. And my need to be loved, to just be loved, to have that attention, that acknowledgement is, is all I ever really wanted, but I needed it constantly and it wasn't enough. It was never enough. One man, one person, one caregiver, it was never enough for me. There's so many rumors and so many false accusations and assumptions that are made around me and my life. And those are from people who don't even know. And I'm not really, I'm not really angry. I'm not upset. They don't know. They just don't know. They didn't know me. They think they know me. They can analyze me now, looking back upon my life and then draw all sorts of conclusions, but they didn't, they never know. And they never will know. They will never know me. Really know me. Or understand the relationships I had or the desires I had or the needs I had for, for, the men in my life that I was that I that I had in my life that I was drawn to that I wanted so desperately to be loved by them and to say that I need to forgive it would be more so to more that I would need to forgive the media and the social conversations around the discussion around my end of life experiences when really they don't know what they're talking about no one no one has the full picture no one knows but me no one they can speculate they can talk and maybe that's where the forgiveness comes in maybe that's the forgiveness to just not care you can't care about what other people think of you and the pursuit of your own happiness and taking care of yourself is something that I misunderstood or, or miss, she says, misinterpreted. I didn't allow myself to let myself be loved within, by me. I needed that outside. I needed the, the validation of a man. I needed the attention. I, I did. Not because I was conceited. It wasn't any conceit. It wasn't any of that. It was the need to be loved and just to be to be treasured and valued and, and validated and, and, and just so so appreciated. And I, trying to fill that that empty place without a family was so hurtful for me that it confused my reality with my fantasy. I thought, I thought things were possible in those relationships when the men were married and when you fall in love with someone, you just fall in love. I fell in love over and over and over again. And I don't need to forgive myself for that. Forgiveness isn't something that I can teach you, I'm afraid. Maybe in the terms of maybe what you would relate to better is to think of it as not caring as much about what other people think of you or how they're going to judge you, or what they're going to write about you in the papers after you're gone, because they can say or do or judge or write anything they want to. 
It doesn't have to be true. As you know, you can see that now. I don't have, do I really have to say that? You can see that now. Far too much time is wasted on that. You see, my desire, my seeking of love and attention was not was not for public status or icon status. It was truly and genuinely for love. It wasn't for the money. It was for the the attention and the love. I think the closest thing to forgiveness and to knowing forgiveness is to know love. And, and you see, Bridget, I never really knew that until now. And now that's all I have. That's what I have. Wow, that was almost a, wow, that was almost like a transformative channel. This is Marilyn. Thanks, Mayor. You know I love you. I appreciate you coming and, and sharing and I hope the audio works on here, you guys, since I didn't get up to grab my microphone. But thank you so much, Marilyn. This has been a channel here at Above Life Channel, hopefully to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope. With Miss Marilyn, Ms. Marilyn Monroe from The Afterlife. What did you think of this channel? Go ahead and put your comments below. I'm interested and curious to see what you guys have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, this is your life. It's your life now. <laughs> so live it. Just live it. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for watching.